Whether we come here against police brutality or to support any form of human rights, we should support without any hesitation, and nobody should be in jail because of their political views. Now let's talk about this wave of global activism with Pavlina Asta, executive director and producer of national podcasts with Salem Group Media. Thank you so much for being here, Pavlina. Yeah, thank you for having me. Okay, so each of these regions clearly facing its own challenges. Yes. To what do you attribute the fervor and the intensity of all of these individual movements? Well, it comes from decades of corruption, mm. honestly. Like there have been in Hong Kong, Spain, especially Lebanon. I'm Lebanese, mm. I have been watching this one especially very closely. And there has just been so much corruption with the politicians when it comes to taxes, basic needs, and people just aren't having it anymore. They don't want to deal with it. They're like, we need, we need change. I know there are many people who, who are looking at some of the protests that we've seen in Lebanon, yeah. and it, in some ways almost hard to believe that this could have been sparked by in what in some parts of the world would be seen as seemingly small taxes, correct? Right. Well, the thing is, in Lebanon, there were multiple factors, right. but the big one that really started the protest was a $6 tax on mm. a free app, WhatsApp, WhatsApp. right? And they, the people know that the, that $6 that they're paying, it's not going towards the roads, it's not going towards you know garbage cleanup mm -hmm. or anything like that. It's going straight to the politicians' pockets, and they are, they've had enough of it. There's been over $17 billion in um, money that has just gone straight to the politicians, and they, they can't have that anymore. I know so many millennials, and that's how I talk to a lot of my friends and family in Lebanon, is through WhatsApp. Like, you can't afford to have a $6 monthly uh, charge on an app that's supposed to be free, you know? MIT Press published a book called Global Activism, Art and Conflict in the 21st uh, Century. And the book, it, it looks into how neo-activist movements often use online media to, to spread the word and to spread the message. Is that the secret? Is that the fuel that, that fans the flames of these movements? Is it social media today? It's, it is social media. That's the beauty of, and I always have a lot of issues with social media, but like it is the, the flame, you know, for the fire. And millennials know that information is freedom. So like if they are able to get their their word out there, then they're able to, to express what's going on. They can show exactly what's going on. That's why Twitter is so big. Um, but they're able to spark all of these other movements all over the world and get the whole world involved with them. Um, and they, they can tell their story right there. They don't have to have have, uh, you know, the TV crew come and, and then, uh, you know, explain what's going on. They can do it themselves. Do you think that it's, it's millennials, though, even more than the platforms and social media? Is it the millennials that are really the true catalyst in what we're seeing in all of these movements? Right. Well, millennials have always been known for wanting to believe in something, wanting to fight for something. So there could be that. Um, but I think it's also the fact that they know how to use these certain technologies their to advantage. their advantage. Yeah. Is the brand of activism that we are seeing today, do you think it's, it's self-fulfilling in some ways? In other words, do you think that these mass demonstrations, no matter where they're happening around right. the world, that people in another part of the world, they're seeing them and they're seeing how effective they can be right. and that that is just inspiring other people to take up the mantle? I definitely think it can be, yeah, because you're seeing what's going on in Hong Kong, which, which is very violent, you know. Um, you're seeing what's going on in Chile where people are dying. Like, there's, I think there's some, uh, you know, wanting to, to be a part of that and to, like, be able to do it for yourself, you know. But at the same time, um, I think peaceful protests are, that's going to be, like, the most effective. Do you think that the fact that we're seeing so many movements and so many protests, do you think that it's sparking a change in terms of how police and governments around the world respond to these movements? Oh, it's definitely changing something. I think it's a little yeah. too early to tell, especially with Hong Kong. They, um, they've been doing it for about you know, a couple months now, mm. but Lebanon, it's been a week. It's been six days in Chile. It's a little too soon to tell, but I definitely think they're all, they're all kind of changing what they're doing. So. Pavlina Asta, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you.